The Mysterious Funeral The turn of the 20th century was an exciting era of innovation and one novel commodity that at that time was burgeoning, even in Clinstephan, was photography. We're very lucky to have a perhaps surprisingly large number of fine photographs of Clinstephan from this time. Many came to Clinstephan to capture its beauty on film. There was even enough trade in the village to sustain two photography studios. One was that of Daniel Griffiths, who specialised in portraits and family photos, and the other belonged to William Vince, who preferred landscapes. Carmarthen-based amateur photographer John Francis Lloyd also came here to take many snaps of the village and surrounding area. The two particular photos of his are rather unusual. These photos clearly depict a funeral taking place at Mariah Chapel on Old School Road. What's unusual about them? For one thing, the very fact there are photos of a funeral in the first place is quite peculiar. But something else that is particularly noteworthy about what's in the photo is that at this funeral, clearly several ladies are in attendance. Many people in Wales alive today remember a time when funerals, or at least certainly burials, were only ever attended by gentlemen. In fact, in some communities, this tradition continued to as recently as the early 1990s. Bearing that in mind makes these photos taken astonishingly in 1900 all the more extraordinary. Who was the person being laid to rest that day? Mariah Calvinistic Methodist Chapel was originally built in 1804 and then rebuilt three times in 1837, 1871 and 1910. We are lucky to have two photos of the chapel by resident photographer William Vince, one being a very rare example of one before the chapel's final rebuilding in 1910. Perhaps the most interesting part of the chapel is its graveyard. Set high up on the steep slope behind the chapel, Mariah's graveyard is appropriately said to have a view to die for. And there are many interesting people buried here, such as Ozzy Rhys Osmond, the art lecturer and broadcaster. Some of the more opulent graves belong to members of the Harris family, such as Ben Harris, a local philanthropist. Up at the top of the graveyard are where members of the Richards family are buried, with their graves marked by these very grand memorials, including this bizarre monument, known locally as the Pineapple. Both the Harris and Richards family were major benefactors of Mariah Chapel, and were there to give a helping hand at its latest re Also buried here are the Stevens family, including Thomas Brown Stevens, High Sheriff of Carmarthenshire. Commemorated with the family is Lieutenant Tom Stevens, son of Thomas Brown Stevens, who served in the Second World War in B Squadron, 1st Regiment of the SAS. Tom's heroism was instrumental to the success of Operation Bull Basket, though little more than a month later he was captured and killed, aged just 24. His physical remains were entombed near where he was found in the town of Verrier in central France. Though, like many of Flinstephan's fallen, he lies with his family in spirit. There are many other stories to tell from this graveyard, but whose burial was the subject of John Francis Lloyd's photographs? The clues we need to find out are in the photographs themselves. Firstly, the fact that ladies are in attendance means the burial was almost certainly that of a woman. Secondly, 
We know that the person must have died in 1900, the year the photo was taken, or at least late December 1899. And thirdly, judging from the position that the funeral goers are gathered around in the photo, it seems the deceased was interred somewhere in the southwest corner of the graveyard. All the clues point to this grave, that of Elizabeth Davis, born in 1827 and died in 1900 at age 73. According to her lichen-covered gravestone, she lived at Brook Cottage, and a few years after her own death, her brother David would pass away and be buried with her. Elizabeth Davis' final resting place may not be particularly grand or otherwise intriguing. She may not have been a wealthy or important individual, and perhaps no one would have remembered her. Nonetheless, the chance quirk that her laying to rest would be captured on camera would cement her place in history. Though she would never know it herself, Elizabeth Davis, over 100 years after her death, inadvertently continues to inspire us to study and appreciate our heritage and learn many fascinating, important and wonderful stories along the way. And what a view she has.